Hello? Yes. Really? Well, yeah, I mean, yes, I am happy with my cable service. It's great. I get all... Well, you, I mean, you don't have to be ugly about it. Oh, we're going to start talking about mamas? I... I Only way I can get my handicap to drop is to quit playing. If I quit playing, I'd be scratched. So now we've looked at a couple of the, you know, sort of old swings or what I guess you could say I started with. And we've seen some of the right side of swings. Now, if you've been watching all the videos, and you've been keeping up with it. You've seen the course vlogs and the, and the work that I've put in in the garage, working on my right arm, you know, working on trying to keep my shape in the reverse case set up and then maintain that shape. Keep my overness, as Gary talks about. Uh, I've done all of this in a matter of about a month and a half or over the course of a month and a half, I should say, and I've done it without any sort of guidance from anybody hands-on. Uh, but I have watched a lot of videos by Ewan Rankin. He's got a great YouTube channel. If any of you guys, I've, I've mentioned him to you. I've had several people mention him to me. He's got a great YouTube channel with lots of videos to explain all of the different pieces, all of the different phases of the swing that you may have questions on. And he explains it in a great way. They're really well-made videos. They're short videos. And they do a great job of explaining the right-sided swing in case you can't glean it from some of Gary's promotional videos that are on YouTube. And before I get too much further, if you haven't subscribed already, please go to subscribe to the channel. Just click the little red button down below that says subscribe. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, and hit the bell off to the side for all the notifications so you don't miss anything. I feel like there's a lot of things that get explained throughout the series that may not be on each individual video. So be sure to go and check out all the rest of that as well as, like, say, the Zen Golf stuff, the Jim Veneto stuff. I've reviewed several systems up to this point, and going forward, you know, it's just going to be better for everybody if you subscribe to the channel and stay up to date. All right, let's dive into this wrap-up. I know there's quite a few people already that are sitting there thinking, what? You had so much success with this system. Why would you change? Why would you move away from it? You got to stay the course. You got to keep going. And I, I get that. I understand that. These are sort of in-depth reviews in the sense that I give them a month or two in general, with the exception of the Jim Veneto system where I had hands-on working with Jim for the course of about six to seven months. This is, this is just me going out and reviewing systems on my own. And I'm the guinea pig then I can go in and spend a month or two with these different techniques, these different approaches, these unconventional swings, and give you my feedback after trying them for what I would consider to be a fairly long time. A month or two, that's a lot longer than most people give these methods, right? I want to expose the viewers, the people that are watching these videos, to some methods other than conventional golf that they probably have never heard of. Maybe before coming to this channel, you had never heard of the JVGA, the Jim Veneto system. Maybe you had never heard of the RSS, the Gary Edwin Right Sided Swing Method. Maybe you had never heard of Zen Golf or Flow Motion or even Robin Matthews Williams. Now, some of these have their cult followings, but as far as mainstream numbers, they really just don't have the, the amount of people that are aware of these or that would give them the time of day. But if somebody comes along, who, as I said, represents them, an average to above average golfer, and gives it a real try and just sees what kind of progress they can make in a month or two, maybe that'll open you up. And if you're having trouble with your game, maybe some of these methods or these approaches, maybe you can get something from them or you can take the complete system and turn it into something that works for you to help drop your scores and make your game more enjoyable. There's a lot of, of ways to strike a golf ball. There's a lot of ways out there to play good uh, effective, skilled golf. Like it doesn't have to come from the conventional golf model. It can come from many different forms. And what works for one may not work for all. Some of us out there, maybe we have mobility issues. Maybe we have 
you know, like flexibility, muscle or bone or, or some kind of issues. Maybe you had a car accident and you have limited mobility. Maybe you had Tiger Woods's spinal fusion surgery and, and you can't really turn your head without turning your whole body. There's people out there, the, their bodies just don't work the same as all these people you see on TV and on tour. So that's what this is really all about, is exploring different ways to achieve the same end, which is skilled golf and the controlling of a golf ball time and time again on a consistent basis to send ball toward target. Now, let's talk about what I learned in the right-sided swing method that Gary Edwin created. So it's not anything new. He's been doing this for, for decades. Um, it's, it's based on sort of a fixed left side and then a right side that swings around that fixed left side. It's based on trying to preset an impact position as your setup position, which again, that sort of harkens back to the Jim Veneto system. You're going to get into a certain position at setup with the conventional golf, and then you're going to be at a different position by the time you get to impact. Why not just go ahead and set up for impact? And I know all you... All you set up for impact people out there, I've seen Kirk's videos. I've watched them. I think he's doing some great stuff, and I have not gotten into a single plane swing. But yes, set up for impact. So just take that setup and, and get ready for impact at your setup. That way you don't have to move as much, and you don't have to come off of the ball. And some of the things that I learned on my own were just the folding and the unfolding of the right arm. Now, I learned those things because I had been studying other people's methods, people like Lee Como and people like the Rotary Swing and, and all of these different teachers. If you name it, I've probably watched it and I've heard of it. I've seen it on YouTube. I've, I've just gotten hours and hours and hours <laughs> of YouTube watching in on all of these different things and that's kind of where I came up with the idea for this channel. Now let's talk about some pros and cons with the right sided swing method. Let's start out with the pros. The pros are, it's a very simple concept. Another one would be is that there's not nearly as many moving parts. It's not, it's not asking you to perform supremely athletic movements. A third would be is that you have a lot of support on, on his website, on YouTube channels like Ewan Rankin, like I mentioned, his website, his channel. There's all kinds of support for it, so you're not alone. There's an entire community out there that knows about the right side of swing and follows it so you can ask questions and you can get help if you're struggling. Another pro, again, I keep going back to this, the setup being sort of a, a, a preset of impact, again, that asks you to move off of the ball less. It just makes everything so much simpler. As long as you maintain your shape and your overness, um, you can kind of make the swing your own. It's not something that's so set in stone. It's not so so fine a point that it has to be this way or the highway. And a lot of these, these people who teach methods out there now that are not conventional, that is kind of their, their, their crooks, is that it has to be this one way, and that's it. You can't, you can't vary from it. Where with the right-sided swing, they allow for some variation. If you look at Peter Sr.'s swing as opposed to Rodney Pampling's swing, they, they don't look the same, but they're applying the same physics, the same technique, the same principles, the same method, and they just go about it different ways. So there is that room for your own creativity and your own uniqueness to come through in the swing. Which leads me to my last pro that I can think of right now off the top of my head. You actually have pros, seniors, regulars, that are using this technique. They're using this method. So it's verified. It, it's proved. It's proof positive. This guy coaches pros. I'll say this. One of the things that I have just believed for so long now that I try to get across in my videos that I'm trying to, to hammer into people's heads is that a lot of teaching pros, a lot of playing pros, a lot of highly skilled golfers who are not necessarily on your TV set every day, but they play scratch or better golf. A lot of those guys, they, they have kind of, I don't want to say lost touch, but their perspective when they try to relate themselves to people like us can be off at times. And not all of them. I'm not saying everybody. And I'm not saying that they're wrong. But the approaches that they take and the, the types of swings and, and moves that they employ, there's just not a lot of us out there that are going to be able to do what these guys do, man. These guys nowadays, if you looked on the tour back in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, you would find some athletes, sure, but you would also find some out-of-shape guys, some older guys, some, 
some alcoholics, if we're honest, some guys who weren't really following good fitness routines. And nowadays, when you turn on your TV set, those guys are all gone. Everybody out there looks like they're some kind of track and field star or a pro basketball player or a pro soccer player. They all look like pro athletes. And the moves that they make and the positions they get in and the timing that they have, we're, I mean, you're talking about those people are the exception. We are the rule. I mean, if you look, just take America, for instance. Americans. As a whole, we're overweight, we're out of shape, we're sedentary, we're working office jobs, our diets are unhealthy. You know, we don't have the hand-eye coordination that these guys have. You know, so to try and put a swing method in play for ourselves that they use on TV, a lot of times they're making that stuff work because they are superior athletic specimens. We are not. Most of us are not anyway. So trying to employ their methods, that's why I've always contended that is just not necessarily the way for most of us to go, which is why I look into unconventional swings so often and I try to get them out there, get them out in front of you so that you can see, hey, take a look at this. And then maybe, just maybe it'll spark something in you. Maybe you don't even use the entire thing. Maybe you're just using a piece of the method. Maybe you learned one thing from a whole series of videos or from an entire two years of YouTube content that I've uploaded. Maybe you've learned one thing. And I can tell you another thing that you should have learned by now, in case you haven't figured it out, the way to good golf and better scores is to not do what I do. By that I mean, the worst thing you can do for your golf game is to jump around from technique to technique, from method to method, like I do in my videos. That is the wrong thing to do. Do not do what I do. That's why I'm doing it, so that You don't have to, but you can get the benefit of seeing an average golfer go through it. The best thing you can do is pick one method, one approach, try and find your natural swing and stick with it to try and be better. Now, if I had to label some cons, some some negatives about this swing method, I would probably be pretty hard pressed, but let's see if I can think of some here. uh, Number one. Most people, when they get into the setup position, they're trying to get out of that position and then back into another position. With trying to set up as if you are making a a slight mock version of impact as you do with the right-sided swing, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be fighting a lot of your instincts because most of us associate more movement with more power. And with the right-sided swing, that is not the case. So I would say con number one is, is that it may not be the easiest swing for you to program over what you already have written in your hard drive upstairs. Another con is, is that a lot of people have been taught that even when they're right-handed and they sit up on this side of the ball, that their lead side needs to be in control, not their trail side. Well, this swing is all about controlling the trail side. So in that regard, it is completely diametrically opposed to a lot of what conventional golf teaches where it's left arm pulls. Instead, this is right arm pushes and extends. Again, that may fight some of your natural instincts and it may be a little tougher to implement. So it kind of goes against the grain. And a lot of times when you hear things like that, there will be a lot of coaches or teachers or high level golfers out there that say, this is crap. This is totally wrong. You shouldn't listen to this. Everybody knows that X is, is the way it goes and Y is just completely wrong. So, is with any swing you're trying that's that doesn't look quote unquote normal. Uh, you're gonna have your detractors. You're gonna have your critics. You're gonna have the naysayers and the people telling you that's not how it's supposed to work. You have to be headstrong and you have to be mentally tough in order to stay the course and know that you're on a path that's works that works for you, not necessarily something that works for everybody else. So to sum it all up, let me just put a nice little bow on it here for you and, and hand you the package. Or do I think that this swing has merit? For the average golfer, absolutely, absolutely. This is a fantastic approach. I love it. I love the the reverse case setup. It just kind of seems natural. You're not really turning yourself open. You're just sitting a little bit, you know, you're bumping your hip against the wall. When you set it on the wall, that is such a good setup. And it almost feels like you're ready to strike the ball a little bit more than you are in a neutral conventional golf setup. But this swing, like I said, you may have to kind of fight overriding some of the stuff that's programmed into your brain. But once you do, you give it enough time, 
I'm telling you, the swing, the impact is powerful. I think this is a great swing. It's simplistic. You've got support. You've got help. There's a community of people that use this. I would say if this looks like it could do something for you and it appeals to you and it draws you in, please go give it a try. You can go to Gary's website. You can sign up. You can take virtual classes, I believe, or you can do in-person classes. I mean, it's, it's definitely a worthwhile swing, and I had a great time using it. Now for the part that everybody is going to give me crap for. Everybody is going to just bag on me for this. It's time to change it up again. I'm putting aside the Gary Edwin right-sided swing. Uh, not to say that I will never come back to the JVGA method or the Zen Golf method or the right-sided swing. Not to say that I've never come back to those. I may circle back to those in the future. But for right now, my course lies in a different direction. And I'll tell you all about that coming up in another video, but I'll save it for you. Be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Let me know. Leave me some comments down below. Are you going to give me crap about changing again? Or are you going to accept the fact that this whole channel is called Golf Test Dummy for a reason? I test out different stuff all the time. It's my job. See you in the next video.